So now I'd like to introduce our speaker. Wayne Feaster is a general practice physician from Rawson, Ohio. He specializes in osteopathic manipulation to treat musculoskeletal conditions. Currently, as a clinical assistant professor for the Ohio University College of Osteopathic Medicine, he directs their Toledo Core Centers for Osteopathic Research and Education program and acts as the main faculty. During his first 16 years of medical practice, Feaster used vitamin and mineral nutrition to remedy disease, but more recently he encourages a traditional diet instead of commercial foods to improve health. As a committed member of the Weston A. Price Foundation, he has helped establish eight local cha chapters where he is a regular speaker, sharing his knowledge of health, nutrition, and food. Please welcome Wayne Feaster. Hello. Hello. Is it working? No? Well, maybe I don't hit switch as well. There it's on. On now? Okay, it just went green. Okay. All right. I can tell it now. Good morning. Good to see so many people here. Didn't think, hope, I was hoping there would be an interest in cookware. And, uh, wow. So I want to thank Sally. I was kind of surprised. I didn't think I'd ever be a speaker here at the Western Price National until I wrote a book or something. Even though I've, well, I've been in this since, I think, close to the beginning. It was 10 years ago this fall that I ran into a set of Sally Fallon lecture tapes from Acres USA and listened to them and thought, my goodness, all the things I've learned and thought about nutrition are really right there. And uh, that started with me becoming a member and getting the quarterly magazines. And, and I actually probably one of the few people that have the full set of the whole 10 years of the, well, almost 11 years of the quarterlies now. So it's been a long time. My father is a practicing uh, osteopathic um, ob -GYN, certified ob -GYN, and uh, he started me on the, he remembers in medical school that they showed how chickens, they fed some uh, chickens a poor diet, and they fed chickens a good diet, and he remembered how they, they flourished on a good diet, and that started him on nutrition, and um, he started me, so, and now here I am here with you. I've, like you heard, started eight different chapters. I lecture between four and seven times a month this month of seven Western Price lectures. And uh, I've got about 30 lectures I do. One of them I made up was cookware, and somehow another Sally heard about it, and she said, would you give the, the lecture? So here I am. As a preempt to, to how are we doing back? Dawn, can you hear me? Okay, as a preempt to this, if you go to the store and you look around and you go to the box stores, whatever, it is, there's all types of black looking cookware. And most of that, and it has inexpensive price on it. And most of it is basically stuff you do not want to take home. It is just stuff that isn't going to last very long. It's not very durable. It's not made of quality components. And the other thing you'll observe if you want to try to look for these components that you may hear today, and, and you can look at the labeling, you can look at all the different stuff and you really can't find what it's made out of, what it's coated with, what it, what, what. It'll have great advertisements that it does all this wonderful cooking, but try to find out what it's really made of, what it really is covered with, what it, and you just really can't do it. So that's quite a bit of the research for what's in this too, and I haven't presented all. There are so many names and so many different types, and I really haven't presented all that. One of the things I found that was interesting recently I was, I saw a Macy's ad and I looked through and if I, w I went to the Macy's website and I found more direct information on what the products were made out of and what they were composed of right there on that website and what you can find out even going to the manufacturer's website. The manufacturer's websites are terrible to find out even what, you know, what it, how's it made and what's it made of and how do you do it. They're just terrible for that. So kind of the preempt to this. And this is dividing this into about three different pieces. First, we're going to look at you know, what characteristics you might want in your cookware. Second, we're going to look at the materials that cookware is made out of. And third, we'll look at uh, what would make a nice set of cookware in your house. And the ability of the cookware uh, to be heated is an important thing. The type of materials it's made out of, 
the weight of that cookware. Sometimes it's too heavy for some people, older ladies. Although I was in several different cookware shops, and the one amazed me because she sold a lot of the heavy cast iron. And she said, you wouldn't believe the little 90-year-old ladies that just buy this really heavy stuff and take it out. So maybe the weight isn't that important. Uh, the type of handles that's on it, and also the type of heat source that you have. Oh, and where the and going through those, most of what's been around probably the longest as far as modern cooking, the coil uh, for electrical resistance, I guess longer has been the open flame gas cooking. Those are the two most popular, so it can make a difference. Especially the induction, that's becoming more and more popular. If anybody knows what that is, they put a coil of wound up metal under underneath the pan. They cause a magnetic high frequency magnetic field to enter the pan and that causes the heat. For the pan to be heated, it has to be magnetic. If there's no ferrous metal in it, it won't heat. So it has to be magnetic. And then radiant heat, that's been around a while. Those, those are sometimes your, more your flat top, your glass top cookware will be the radiant type, or at least the ones that glow red. And one that I haven't seen as much recently is the halogen ones. Has anybody ever touched a halogen light bulb after it's been on or while it's on and how hot it gets? Well, you can use halogen light as a way to cook too. It's and here we go. Pictures from our kitchen. And we have a nice ham here that's been done in a Le Creuset. And on some of these you'll notice I've printed in what type of cookware it is. Here's a Le Creuset um, Dutch oven and a ham in it. So we were doing a roast, we roasted a ham, so we used enameled cast iron. And I don't, we didn't do any spaghetti sauce, but spaghetti sauce you'd want to use in stainless steel. Spaghetti sauce is acidic. Acid will eat away at some of the metals, like cast iron and aluminum, so you'd want to use stainless steel. Bacon and eggs. Cast iron has been a popular, naturally nonstick, so what you're going to cook would make a difference on what you want to use. The spaghetti sauce is acidic, it's tomato based. She's asking why would you use stainless steel for tomatoes because tomatoes are acidic and the acid will eat away at cast iron and aluminum and I'll actually remove some. Yes? The enamel. Yes. No, eat at the enamel. And there is, we'll get to that, there's some Lakers say. Okay, comfort and convenience. If it's too heavy to lift, again, we talked about that. If, and some people complain about that. It's just my wrist isn't strong enough and all that, so that'd be a problem. And then is the handle comfortable? Does that handle get hot? Does it? I just had somebody here, one of the gentlemen run this thing. He said he didn't like the handle on the one, so yeah, that was his problem. And that's I've learned this from several different people. If it's not comfortable, if you're not, if it doesn't work good for you, and on and on, you can no matter what you spent for it, no matter you're not going to use it. So make sure that it's comfortable for you to use. Does it cook easily? Does it make you look like a great cook? You know, or is, it, or is it a chore? Again, you won't use it. And then how easy is it to clean? Some are easier to clean, some aren't. Weight. Again, too heavy to lift. Speed and efficiency of cooking. There's a big thing out there as you read some of the advertising, they want you to have these real light ones because they heat up real quick and they take less energy and, and you want to be green and you want to be energy efficient. But actually, if you get down to the heavy ones, they heat more slowly, yes, and they take more energy to heat them. But once they're warm, they retain that heat, and they don't require much heat after that. So actually, there can be an energy saving using a heavy one, because you're actually using less energy after you get it warm. And, and the heavier ones, the more, the more weight there is to it, the more even the temperature will be. The light ones, I know. If you ever watch a radiant, it'll turn on and off and on and off. We could go up and down in temperature like, the, like as you if it heats and cools quickly. But if you have one that retains heat, it'll stay more even. Price. Yeah, price is a big concern. And I'm, yes, I'm a physician. Yes, I have a little money. I want to, and I'm, I want to be respectful to people and that don't. And, and I'm, I'm trying to point out that we want good materials, we want lifetime quality, and, and we want the money spent well so that we don't to go down and find a $45 skillet and you have to replace it in three years and do it again and again. I, I'm trying to get you, maybe I'm suggesting material, pots and pans that cost a little more, but they'll, they'll be a lifetime. So the fully clad cookware, it's expensive, it really is. The cast iron, inexpensive, really easy to buy. 
enameled cast iron, you can find that at several different price points.